It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So let's let's jump right in. Let's go into the 20s. I mean, I want to talk about building that base up. Uh, there's a lot going on in this decade because you've got to build the foundational knowledge. This is I, I know when I graduated college, um, I, that's when I discovered that Millionaire Next Door book, mm-hmm. The Wealthy Barber, and it just lit a fire in my brain on on starting to say. But there is so much I, I, I worry about. Anybody who's in their 20s now is because it is also the greatest time to be alive, to be an investor, to be a saver. But it's also the scariest mm-hmm. in the fact that there's just so much information. That's how right. do you how do you kind of curate it and bring it back? Um, and, and, and and there's also some emotional stuff. That's what I was saying. Not only is there this like vat of information of it. I know when uh, I hear this all the time from young folks or folks that are just graduating. I didn't learn personal finance. I didn't have that yeah. class in college. Didn't have that class in school. So there's tons of information, tons of knowledge to be had. But there are so many distractions for those in the 20s. This is our first. I mean, I guess college was our first like taste of freedom. But this is our first like taste of like real adulthood, adult adulthood. And there's a lot of things that can like get us off track and send us in different directions. So we think if you have some of this foundational knowledge built, it can help keep you in line. So let's let's talk about this. How do we do it? And, and I like I want you if you're a 20 something. How do you automate this process? Mm -hmm. Let's make it automatic for the people. Let's talk about the financial planning pyramid. So if we think about this pyramid and sort of the base that we have to think through, number one is cash flow, right? Money coming in, money going out. And so when it comes to things to think about in your 20s, number one is obviously very basic. Spend less than you make. Learn how to live on less than the income that you have coming in. If you can just figure out that one thing, we call it deferred gratification. If you just figure out that one thing, you're already going to put yourself worlds ahead of your peers. Yeah, and, and think about it in terms of don't. A lot of people, I think, they just wait to see what's left over at the end of the month. Yep. No, you need to be very proactive in your cash flow planning mm-hmm. to where you're actually paying yourself first. That's back to that automatic wealth creation by going ahead and, and creating a system, dollar cost average every month, have money going into your investments so that you don't let this just whatever is left over is what I invest. That's not going to work. Uh, number two, and you hear us preach this one all the time, understand the dangers of debt. Now, we are not here at the Money Guy Show anti-debt or against all debt, but we do recognize that it is a tool that can be incredibly useful in your financial toolbox, toolbox, But it can also be incredibly dangerous, and I worry that a lot of folks in their 20s use it carelessly and use it haphazardly. Well, but I want to be careful um, because, you know, you look at UGA football. Mm -hmm. There's a danger. There's a danger of some of the coaches. When you look back through the history, they were known as players' coaches, Mm -hmm. meaning they didn't squeeze to get the. They were too friendly with their with their players. They didn't get the best out of everybody. You kind of want to go with that field general, where you know you like your coach, but you want to make sure that you got a little bit of fear there. And that's why I do think that at this stage. If you're not scared of your debt, that's why we mm-hmm. always talk about treat it like it's a chainsaw. If you're using debt and you're not scared, you're probably using it wrong. And that falls on the credit cards. Because I think in your 20s, that is the big, big risk sure. is because you, you look at this as a bridge. I'll just take the credit card debt. It will bridge me until I make more money and then I'll pay myself back. The problem is no, it's a siren song. You'll get trapped. You'll get behind, and you'll look back in that one bad mistake. If you can't pay it off monthly, don't even use it. And this one, this last one, I think in today's society, in uh, today's culture, uh, this is one that's interesting. Spend what is left after saving. You said this, Brian. Automate your savings. Learn how to do that early. And then live on the cheap. Yeah. I think the 20s is probably the only time in your life where it's okay to live incredibly cheaply, to really pinch pennies, to really, I mean, I, I don't mind. This is not the greatest like health thing, but youth will cover a lot of this. When I was in my 20s, like I don't know that I had the best diet. I was going to like Publix and I was buying the, you know, the two for one cereals and I was eating that for a lot of meals. I'm not recommending that as like your nutrition plan. But man, it was pretty awesome having those extra dollars to be able to put into my Roth IRA. I'd like to say we're not recommending Captain Crunch every meal. That is <laughs> definitely not a recipe. I for eat honey nut Cheerios. That's the healthy one. But I do want you to bedazzle the basics. There's no reason that you can't still enjoy your life, but do it in a very cost-effective way. And the, and the reason we're so Focus on the discipline, the deferred gratification is because there's exponential echoes, That's meaning right. that whatever you do in your twenties. 
will just have tremendous exponential growth opportunities in the long term. So it is, if your car payment is $250 a month versus $700 a month, and you get to take that difference and actually mm-hmm. throw it into investments, I'm telling you, your 50-year-old self will give you the sloppiest hug you've ever seen because they'll be so happy um, that they'll leave you know tear stains on you as, as, as you back away from the hug. But it is one of those things. Focus on that great, big, beautiful tomorrow. It doesn't happen without taking small little mm-hmm. steps while you're in your 20s. And Bo, this leads to, I want to talk about risk management because we're talking about how to to get the cash flow Mm -hmm. right, but we do have to make sure that a little thing that should be a setback doesn't throw you into desperation and chaos. That's exactly right. If you've been listening to the show for any amount of time, you know that we love the financial order of operations. It's a nine-step tried and true process to get you through the financial decisions you have to make. Well, step number one in the FOO is to have your deductibles covered. That means your health insurance deductible, your auto deductible, your home deductible, so that if something happens, if that unknown Tuesday event takes place, you at least have money to keep yourself out of the ditch. And you may say, oh, well, that doesn't seem like a big hurdle. That doesn't seem like a huge threshold to get over. We know that right now, 56% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings. I mean, if some uh uh-oh came along, they couldn't come up with a thousand bucks without going into debt. So this shows us that if all you have done is covered your deductibles, you are likely doing better than 56% of the other folks in this country yeah, right now. Historically, this number is close to 60%. Mm-hmm. We look at this number every year, and I think the only reason it's at 56% is probably post-pandemic there was mm-hmm. um, you know money that had, had been paid out and so forth. I wouldn't be shocked to see this number go right back to 60. Don't be, don't be that. I mean, mm-hmm. that's a step one of financial abundance when we go through our levels of wealth is just having enough money to where you can cover the deductibles covered. So you guys, and by the way, I feel like it's cruel if we don't talk, if we talk about the foo and we don't say moneyguy.com slash resources. If you too want to download yep. what the nine steps are, if you want to go to learn.moneyguy.com, we actually have a deeper dive course that you can go check out. But another thing, when you're in your twenties, you're healthy. Yep. So a lot of people, I think you feel bulletproof Health insurance is expensive. It's boring. A lot of 20-year-olds don't even feel like they need it. But we want people to have health insurance. I I get so sad when I see someone say, hey, you know, I'm I'm about to hit 26. I've been on mom and dad's health insurance, but I'm about to age out of that. Uh, And, you know, I'm just, I don't, uh, that extra $200 a month, 300, whatever it is, I'm just going to avoid. I don't go to the doctor. I don't need it. The problem is the reason that we have insurance is to cover those things that we don't know, those uh uh-ohs that we're not prepared for. You don't want to be in the situation when you're 27, 28, 29 years old where you get in that car accident or you have that accident at the gym or whatever the thing is that puts you in the hospital and you are literally flying naked because you have no coverage don't do that. Make sure you have the right types of insurance in place. Well, we also know a lot of bankruptcies are caused by Absolutely. medical type things that happen. And you don't want to have a, a, an oopsie or a bad thing, just like you describe, really side rail you to where even if you file bankruptcy, you're still it's going to take uh, close to a decade, right. seven to 10 years to get back to, to ground zero, where you even have the ability to do normal things like mortgages mm-hmm. and so forth. It's just not worth the risk. Have health insurance. We also listed have property insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, what we're talking about here, a lot of you probably do rent. Yep. I mean, and, and look, even though you're not in charge of the grounds, you are in charge of everything that's inside the wall. So renter's insurance should not even be overlooked if you're in your 20s. It's too cheap to protect yourself from the big oopsies that totally derail and side rail your financial life. <laughs> and then the other thing in your 20s you want to be thinking about is you want to be building your emergency reserves. Again, you might not fully have step number four of the foo maxed out. You might not have that full three to six, but you ought to be working towards that. Once you got the deductibles covered, then you want to make sure that you have somewhere between three to six months of your living expenses in cash on the sidelines. Again, in case something happens, job loss, medical emergency, whatever, you can cover those unknown circumstances that might happen. So we, we've kind of covered cash flow. Mm-hmm. We've covered risk management. Let's talk about how the, the sexy stuff that actually creates wealth, sure. and that's investing, putting that army of dollar bills to work. Here's the first thing I need 20-somethings to know. 
you recognize you're a billionaire of time. Yep. I mean, that is the biggest part. When I talk about the three components of wealth creation, we have discipline. That's your focus. That's that deferred gratification. That creates margin um, that allows you to invest money. You Mm -hmm. know, cash flow is always needed. And then that third component is the most important component, which is time. And since when you're in your 20s, you are a billionaire of seconds and minutes. It is crazy for you not to maximize the exponential growth opportunity. And this is just how powerful that time can be. You've heard us say it all the time. On every show that we have, Brian keeps a koozie right there that says this $1 can turn into $88. There's this concept that for someone who's 20 and they put $1 to work, 20, over the 21 for the beer drink. If you're a beer drinker, you got to be 21 to retire at 66. But if you're just a 20 year old working, one dollar can turn into $88 by the time that you get to age 65. At the early parts of your career, your dollars are more powerful than they will be at any other time in your working life. So the sooner you can figure this out, the earlier you can start saving. saving the better off you will be. If you want to know what your multiplier is based on your age, go to moneyguy.com slash resource. So we have this wealth multiplier. You can see it on the screen and it shows that at 20, it's 88. But by the time you get to 25, it drops down to 44. Still super powerful, but the earlier you figure it out, the better off you will be for the long term. Yeah, and a lot of people, if you're brand new, because look, y'all wonder, we cover these concepts 50% 50% of you are brand new to the Money Guy channel. And I want to tell you, you're saying, how? Tell me, tell me how do I do this? What's going to get me this type of multiplier? In the beginning, there's nothing wrong with index target retirement funds where you basically have to answer two questions. How much can I save? When do I need it? They will do all the heavy lifting of the asset allocation, dealing, you know, get being very aggressive while you're young, getting more conservative as you're older. Now, look, you will outgrow this mm-hmm. at some point, but it's that great, big, beautiful tomorrow moment where you're super successful. You need a financial planner. But in the beginning, an index target retirement fund that doesn't have commissions and, and the three biggest providers are like the Vanguards, the Fidelity Investments, the Charles Schwab's. They're going to be able to hook you up. Focus on how much you can sell. Save mm-hmm. more than where the money goes because savings rate is so much more important than the the mix of things when you're starting out. All right. So now as we're working up in the pyramid, we get to more complex items. And one of the items that gets a little more complex is tax planning. It's so funny with where I sit right now, I look back to my 20 year old self and I'm kind of envious mm-hmm. of what tax planning was like for me back then. I used to think, and you said this too, Brian, man, I can't wait till it's complicated. I can't wait till I have K-1s and Schedule C's and Schedule E's and all these different things. In your 20s, don't try to make your taxes any more complicated than they have to be. I miss the time, Brian, when I could take on like April the 14th, I could spend about 20 minutes going through my tax return and just get it done very, very quickly. That will change. So don't try to complicate your tax life. It's okay early on if it's fairly simple. Yeah. I mean, I I think for most people, this is when you're in your 20s, more than likely you're doing your taxes in the Februarys because you're just taking your W-2. You want to get that refund (laughs) You want to get that refund money, you know, coming in. So, so yeah, don't go chasing complex. It will find you with further success. It will come. Um, You can use tools like TurboTax. We even threw out um, uh, the, the referral because because I know what you volunteered yep. with at UGA, um, and this is everywhere. Vita is a, a not-for-profit organization right, yep. that helps people in the community prepare their taxes. Mm-hmm. We, matter of fact, we even have um, clients that volunteer. Yeah, that as is their one retirement. Of, as they retire, they they retire into this is one of their community involvement things. I, th- I think that's outstanding because we all know financial mutants get this stuff. Yeah, if you're curious, and it's a free service. It's vol- volunteer income tax assistance. You can go look up Vita. It's a really really great program. Not a bad thing to think about if you have a very simple tax situation. All right. Well, then we have estate planning. Now, I don't know about you, Brian. In my 20s, estate planning was not something that was like top of mind. I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking about my mortality there. And I wasn't thinking that really there was a lot of work for me to do there. So one of the things we said that just sort of a basic thing is make sure beneficiaries are updated on your account. So if you have a Roth IRA, make sure you have a beneficiary added to that. If you have your 401k that you are contributing to, make sure that you have beneficiaries listed on that account so that in the unbelievable event that something did happen to you, 
your assets would pass to the people that you want your assets to pass to. Um, estate planning, if you have, because there are com, you know things that complicate life. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, if you have children and other things, make sure your estate planning. You still would probably want a will or something. Sure. We had a whole discussion: is this a napkin estate plan? <laughs> is this bowler plate? I think in the beginning, the biggest thing is make sure those. Big risk, like, hey, who's going to take care of the kids, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and how my assets are going to pass. Just make sure you are giving a little thought to that. It's probably not going to be super complex in your twenties, but it still re- deserves uh, 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 your attention so that no mistakes are made, just in case. 